Hey everyone, my name is Victor, and today on Surviving and Thriving in Higher Education, we're going to be starting a series called Coping with COVID, where we're talking with faculty and students from around the world about what it's like and their experiences in being researchers in the midst of a global pandemic. We hope it's informative and useful, and that you take comfort in the fact that you're not alone in this crisis. So we hope you enjoy. Stay tuned for more. What, uh... What's your, what's, your, what's your name? Where are you from? <laughs> uh, I'm Helen Chen, and I am from Honolulu, Hawaii. I study at Baylor University under the Electrical Engineering Doctorate Program, and currently I am looking at bearing research and extending life on uh, electric motor bearing applications and looking into sustainable engineering in the sense of figuring out how to make electric vehicles more sustainable and also more appealing to the public. And right now we are looking at battery life specifically. Like how is COVID-19 impacting you as an incoming student? So funny story. Um, I was actually only starting to look at grad schools because I heard that because of coronavirus, some schools were waiving their requirements for applications. So uh, the GRE was the main thing that I did not want to even touch because that would mean hours of studying and hours of sitting in a test. <laughs> um, I'm already doing research right now. I kind of just got thrown in, honestly, but um, it's been good. It's been a big learning curve and um, being someone who has never done research in her life, like I thought about undergraduate research but never got into it. Um, and I didn't think that research would even be something I would enjoy. The thought of research really scared me, honestly, but now that I'm in it and I uh, get to see how like some of my skills do really fit uh, within the program and within uh, doing actual research and working with other people on the team uh, has been, a good thing to learn. I mean, do you did you have any concerns, I guess, about the relevance of your research in the wake of COVID? Has that ever crossed your mind? I don't think there are any concerns concerning our research, just because our sponsors are wanting to advance in the science and technology gap with bearings and with mm -hmm. sustainable transportation. And so regardless of the pandemic, we still want this research to be done. What COVID-related initiatives what do you hope that your university takes? So Baylor actually has been super helpful with COVID stuff that's already happened. So in the spring, they pushed out a lot of online resources for us. We're very um, mindful of both the student population and our professors who may be older uh, and more susceptible to the virus. Masks are required on Baylor property. Within our community, it is really cool to see that Baylor is still going strong because it's not just about like the health and safety of our students. We're also part of the bigger community, which is the Waco community, right? So they have implemented different um, strategies to keep everyone safe, but still serving the community. So for example, the Meals for Texas Hunger Initiative, they have kept because they know that students and children and families uh, may be without food because uh, of the school shutting down. And they've also let people be part of the Bear Kit program where some faculty are partnering with students and helping them throughout this crisis. I'm encouraging people who are in town to support local businesses here in Waco. And then of course, the standard COVID stuff, right? Uh, having conversations about what it looks like to continue life in a pandemic, um, anything from spiritual life to mental health to um, just keeping everyone informed about like the cases. Another thing that has been cool to see is that summer courses have been discounted at Baylor uh, this summer. That provides incentive for people to want to continue their education here. With things becoming online next fall, some students are upset because they're still paying regular tuition for online courses, right? But Baylor does take these things into account and we've already seen budget cuts 
uh, happen for some things that we were hoping to like push out in the next year. Just seeing how caring the Baylor community has been and like how leadership is still taking the measures that they need to adapt to the new ever-changing times. Do you have any tips for other people who are also entering a program um, to sort of get ready for? Just being flexible with what's happening in the world. Um, it's like more important now than ever with uh, our normal not looking normal at all and maybe our normal during the pandemic is going to be normal for whoever knows how much time for people who might get burnt out because I, I feel like I'm at a risk of burning out uh, pretty quickly. Making time to enjoy the moments that you have. I know this it sounds cheesy maybe, but really it's about the people you work with and the people that you get to live life with, right? And so I'm super blessed to have a really awesome research team and I've like known uh, a lot of them for some years now at Baylor. Uh, taking the time off that you need and of course still working hard at research and developing those skills that you need be it like online communication skills because of COVID which has been super good for me because then I can like word my emails in a way that uh, feels like professional but also caring because during these times it's even more important to be kind. Having a schedule is helpful because it's not, <laughs> it's a lot more work than I thought. It has been super stressful at first and then finding my groove I guess in a sense and just figuring out okay when can I be mo most productive in my day and then when can I take breaks and and also uh, when can I learn more about like the concepts that maybe I forgot from undergrad already because it's been three years since I took some classes, right? Figuring out where your own knowledge gaps are, learning how to ask the good questions and then like not being afraid of asking dumb questions, I think is super helpful. And that's something that I'm trying to learn. All right. Well, Helen, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk with me. Yes, thank you for having me. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like and comment down below about how you're coping with COVID and if there are any questions that you'd like us to ask our future interviewees. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and check out the rest of our channel up there if you are interested in looking at more of what we've got in store. Hope you're all staying safe and we'll see you in the next one.